All right, everybody, today for some reason I feel like doing two videos, and this one's gonna be on the thyroid. So a little sneak peek into the course coming in about two to three months. So how do you know if your thyroid is off? You're probably feeling a little bit sluggish. You're feeling a little bit cold. If you have coffee and you get really perked up and you feel like you need coffee in the morning to get going, that's also a good sign of thyroid issues. A lot of people don't know that caffeine and coffee lowers your thyroid medication effectiveness by about 30 to 40%. They also typically don't know that Synthroid often contains gluten. So you wanna ask your pharmacist if there's gluten or trace amounts of gluten in your thyroid medication because a lot of people who have thyroid issues have something called molecular mimicry, which is where gluten mimics thyroid tissue. And when you have antibodies against your thyroid, which 70 to 90% of, I know it's like 70, no, I think it's closer to 80% of people I've heard different um, you know, stats, but around 80% of people who have thyroid issues, some people say 90%, have antibodies to their thyroid, which makes it called Hashimoto's. And when you have antibodies to your thyroid tissue, if you eat gluten, you're most likely going to also get molecular mimicry where the thyroid is destroying itself or your body is attacking its own thyroid. It's basically regenerating its own thyroid at a faster pace than normal to go and re like attack and repair and replace the thyroid tissue with something new and better because you either have an infection or toxins or molecular mimicry process going on or something going wrong in your throat chakra. There's something going wrong with your thyroid. So you might also know that you have thyroid issues if you have issues speaking up for yourself, if you get a knot in your throat every time something stressful comes up, if you're having trouble feeling heard or understood or just speaking your truth, if you're in a relationship where you feel like they don't understand you, that can be a major problem with your thyroid and your adrenal glands. It can keep you tired. It can keep you shut down. It can keep you feeling less than. It can. So thyroid issues often relate to fatigue, feeling cold, cold hands and extremities, general feelings of cold, coldness. Some people don't have that though and still have thyroid issues, but you could have a slow metabolism. You could be gaining weight if you have low thyroid. If you have a hyperthyroid, it's kind of the opposite. Your metabolism's revved up. You can be anxiety, um, having anxiety attacks or generalized anxiety for no re good reason at all. Um, Graves' disease often causes that where people get sweating and hot and flushed and high blood pressure for no reason at all. So if you have Hashimoto's, which is, remember, 80, 90% of people, you're likely to have ups and downs. So even though your hormone levels might be a little bit low, you can have surges or what's called like a thyroid storm where your thyroid levels actually will not just go down or they're not down all the time. They'll be down some of the time and then they'll be up for times and then down some of the time. So you can be depressed and anxious. You can be low and high. You can be low energy and hyper at times. So you can be not manic depressive, like a full diagnosis, but you can be up and down. So people who have ups and downs or their days aren't steady all the time, that's typically a hormonal issue, whether it's thyroid or adrenal issues. So how to know if you need help with your thyroid. You do the lab test because if you're not testing, you're guessing, but we'll re be releasing a thyroid symptom quiz in the next month or two to kind of like start to help people understand where they are at in terms of the most common thyroid symptoms beyond just what I just told you um, off the top of my head. But thyroid issues, you wanna test for total T3, free T3, total T4, free T4, anti-TSI, anti-thyroglobulin, anti-TPO, and then reverse T3 and a TSH. So there's T3, T4 in two forms, TSH, the three, two or three antibodies, and then reverse T3. So all of those are extremely important to test because a lot of doctors will only check one or two or three or four and not all seven or eight. So you're really gonna miss the boat in a lot of cases which is tough, but that's just how things are. A lot of doctors are missing the boat because they don't understand how the immune system and autoimmune system plays a role in your thyroid and why that causes people to not be hypo all the time. And a lot of people are on a dose of thyroid medication that's causing problems, like they're on Synthroid with gluten and that's actually causing longer term destruction of their thyroid and problems. So they sometimes need to go to a compounding pharmacy or talk to their pharmacist about different versions, but sometimes those other versions are more expensive. And some people have normal T4 and low T3. So it really helps to test and be sure of what's going on. And if you're doing that test, you might as well add a DHEA, testosterone, total testosterone, and cortisol fasting in the morning just to see where some of those extra 
HPA axis markers are at. So you'll know with blood testing, you'll know with symptom tests. It also really helps to palpate, doc, have your doctor actually touch you, surprise, and palpate your thyroid to see if you might have a nodule or a goiter, or when you swallow, does your thyroid actually move, and or to do an ultrasound of your thyroid. A lot of thyroid issues go undiagnosed because the labs look normal, the symptoms are still off, and so the doctor says, well, your labs are normal, even the full thyroid pan is normal. But you have low thyroid symptoms. So they do an ultrasound of your thyroid and they look, so, oh shoot, there's actually cysts or there's a little goiter in the backside that we couldn't palpate. So doing an ultrasound can also help detect some of those subtle thyroid issues that are often missed. If like everybody in your thyroid, everyone in your family has thyroid issues and you think you might have one and your symptom thyroid score is really off and your adrenals are pretty okay and everything else is like wonky, then what do you do? you do a thyroid ultrasound, you do a hands-on exam, or you just do things that are good for your thyroid anyway and see if you start to get better. So first step is always awareness, figuring out do I have it, which is symptoms, history, exam, family history, and lab testing. Hope this helps. Uh, we'll be releasing more information in the coming months. Can't wait to help more of you with your thyroid issues because it's so prevalent. It's what our members want next more than anything. And I'm excited to be able to offer some of those free symptom quizzes and some of those initial starting steps for free for thousands and thousands of people. And hopefully it's good enough that you're willing to share it. If you have any questions or things you want me to cover in the thyroid course, please put them in the comments below. I would really like your help in terms of like questions you have. Um, a lot of people have questions on goitrogens or cruciferous vegetables or iodine or selenium. Those things we're going to cover. We're going to cover the lab tests. We're going to cover a lot of stuff. Um, sorry, just honking to warn that car because he almost hit somebody. So I just might have saved that guy, which is pretty cool because he looked up from his texting from his phone. Anyways, love you all. Have a great day. Bye.